have been doing amazing work to support their local communities during the pandemic. Cumbria Community Foundation's COVID-19 response fund has now given out almost £1 million in grants to these organisations, but there's still a long way to go. So we want to show our support for the foundation and those that it's helping. You can get involved as well. Over the next few months, we'll be featuring some of the groups who've had grants and we'll be hearing about the difference they've already made to people's lives during these extremely difficult times. Joining us now is Matt Butler from Space to Create in Kendall. Matt, good morning to you. Before the pandemic, what was the role of your organisation and how, do you, how did you deliver that in practice? Um, we run groups, so creative social groups, so people in small groups just creating art. Um, and we worked mainly with people with mental health problems, helping build their confidence and esteem and getting them back into education or training or employment. Um, so it was all based at our unit. People came to us. So when the lockdown came into play, what did you do? How did you adapt? And, and how did the money from the foundation actually help you with that? Well, the lockdown obviously meant we had to stop all our groups immediately. And we had a, a, a think about what we could do. Um, and we realised that social media was probably the best way to go. Um, just before the, the lockdown started, we used all the resources we had and created um, packs for our service users to take away. Um, so initially they were um, so we worked out most of our resources. Uh, the grant from Cumbria Foundation allowed us to buy more resources and we kept making up bags. So as we created packs, all of our different art materials in them and we were just handing those out to anybody. So those packs have gone to um, the Cumbria County Council Hawks, the Health and Wellbeing Coaches, um, the Social Prescribing Team, um, other local groups as well, and anybody who, who wanted them. So we've been able to support vulnerable adults, keep themselves occupied at home. You mentioned as well social media. You actually went online with your sessions. How did that work in practice? Um, a bit tricky to start with. We weren't very used to um, using video, but we, we filmed um, about usually about 15, 20 minute sessions where one of our volunteers creates something and talks through how to do it. And then we post those online so people could watch the videos and then use the creative packs they've got. So in a nutshell, finally, Matt, how vital has the funding been from the Cumbria Community Foundation for what you do? Oh, it's essential. Um, we're only a small charity. I mean, our, our budget in each is only about £20,000. And I think we've given out sort of two and a half thousand pounds worth of creative materials so all those p people at home with mental health problems who are struggling you know we're giving them something to do something to occupy their time with and also to maintain that kind of feeling of being part of something so they're, they're interacting online and you know socially engaging matt thank you matt butler from space to create in kendall well let's hear from someone that it's been working with Debbie Mays has been telling me how Space to Create has helped her during lockdown. I have bipolar disorder and part of my coping strategy is to keep a good routine and to attend groups like Space to Create and they help keep my mood stable. So given what you've just said, how were you feeling as you could see lockdown approaching it as lockdown became inevitable? I thought I would be okay because I'd been stable up until then and I'd been doing quite well it was only when lockdown actually happened that it affected my mental health quite badly um, and I became quite unwell how did it make you feel what what were you experiencing I was anxious and depressed and I just felt like I wasn't connected with any of the normal people I would normally see I wasn't able to go to the places I normally go to and, of course, one of those was space to create. But during yeah. lockdown, they've, they've been delivering art materials to your door. They've been doing video demos of, of what you can create for you and other people who would normally go to their sessions. Take me back to the first day that you actually got a delivery for them. What was that like? I had some art materials at home, but I was limited and my brushes were really rubbish. So getting the creative pack was lovely. It was like lockdown Christmas. There was all these lovely art materials, nice brushes, fine line pens. It was it was just great. What sort of artwork do you like to do in particular? Well, normally I do craft work, so I normally do um, crochet and uh, sewing. Through space to create online videos, 
I've been doing new things like painting and drawing. What sort of subjects have you drawn? I've done a barrage of flowers, a little sort of harbour scene of a lighthouse, and some abstract, abstract things. What sort of a difference to your life at this point in time has space to create the, the, the gifts of the, the art, the art stuff, the videos that they've done, the video demonstrations? What difference has that made to your life? It's been great. I mean, it's given me back a bit of a routine. I still miss the group, but by doing the artwork alongside Matt or Kev on the video, it helps me feel connected with them. And then later I'll post what I've done on Facebook and they'll respond and say, you know, well done, that looks good, or whatever. And I just feel like I'm part of a community again. How much of a difference does being part of that community actually make to you? Oh, it's a huge, really important part of my life to be part of Space to Create and other groups like that. I suppose they're part of my identity of who I see myself as I'm not just someone with a mental health problem, but I can create art as well. So it's, yeah, part of who I am. Debbie May is telling me how she's benefited from Space to Create and Kendall, one of the organisations that's been given money from Cumbria Community Foundation's COVID-19 Response Fund. Tomorrow we'll be hearing how another group has used the fund to help the most vulnerable in their community. And then on Friday we'll be looking further ahead and asking how the foundation and the groups it's helping will deal with the recovery phase of the pandemic. You can actually find out a bit more about all of this. Visit the website bbc.co.uk slash make a difference. That's bbc.co.uk slash make a difference. And the very latest, by the way, from our Make a Difference team will be here at 8.45 this morning. A quick look at some of the front pages. Many wonderful volunteers and paid staff working hard to support people in communities across Cumbria during the pandemic. Many of the organisations involved have been given a grant from Cumbria Community Foundation's COVID-19 Response Fund. And we're doing our bit over the next few months and weeks to, to raise awareness of the fund. You've been hearing more about it in our Make a Difference bulletins each hour. And the need for this money is going to go on for a long time, we know. Now, the Northern Fells Group has been going for a number of years, helping to reduce rural isolation in seven local parishes across an area of 200 square miles. Earlier, I spoke to Anne Manger. Anne lives in a parish which is covered by the Northern Fells Group. She told me about her medical condition and how the Northern Fells Group have assisted her. Take a listen to this. Well, I suppose I was in my own lockdown because I'd had a stem cell transplant in November and got home at the beginning of December. So I'm very vulnerable to infection, so I sort of locked myself down. So in a way, when I received the shielding letter in the middle of March, it, in many ways it didn't affect me um, psychologically because I was already in that position of being you know, at home and, uh, and being safe. And as you say, because of your stem cell transplant, you sort of preempted lockdown and, and started shielding early. Um, and your situation as well, you, you live with your daughter, is that right? Yes, my daughter's come to live with me to sort of, um, you know, almost be my care, if you like. One thing, to just to go back to the, the shielding letter, I have to say that said about having fresh air by opening a window. And it was about 24 hours later that I realised that, of course, it didn't apply to me as I've got a garden. So I could at least get out into the garden and, and get a bit of exercise and, and do a bit of work out there. Right. So initially you thought, hang on, just me in my window. Um... Yes. <laughs> and, and that's why I am so, you know, a lot of us living in the Northern Fells area, we are very, very fortunate because we do have the Northern Fells. We've got the Corbeck area and the Mungrysdale Valley. The to look at. See, that's incredible. Yeah, beautiful part of the world. And, and do tell us, Anne, how the Northern Fells Group has been helping you during the pandemic. Okay, I should walk that back a little bit because I think the Northern Fells Group help everyone all the time. You know that they're there. They're like an umbrella network. And ironically, 18 years ago, I was probably one of those members who would go out and change somebody's light bulb or walk somebody's dog who had, you know, for some whatever reason, wasn't able to do it. So it was like the clock turning around and I needed to call upon their help. Medicines would be, you know, could be delivered. The village shop, one started to, um, to shop 
locally. So it tends to rely very much on the shop up at Hesket. And the shopping was delivered by a wonderful volunteer who had volunteered for the Northern South Group. Uh, what else? Oh, busy gardening. The tire on my wheelbarrow went. So email Philippa. And before you know it, somebody's come along to take the wheel and get it all sorted. It's little things like that, you know, that act as a backup and mean that you just get on with your life. Incredible people, as you say, the volunteers from the Northern Fells group, Philip out one of them. Um, you know, we're not out of the woods yet, everyone keeps saying, um, but, you know, months into into lockdown for those sort of shielding, uh, what would you say to, to anyone else in a similar situation? And, um, you know, after you had a big operation in November, how are you doing now, Anne? Oh, I'm fine, absolutely fine. I, I, I like to think I'm fine anyway. But how do I feel? Well, I, I think one just has to sort of literally take it one step at a time and, and all being well that the support of the Lord themselves will be there. And the other aspect that I haven't mentioned about their support is that there are regular you know, bulletins um, which is full of information. She attaches quizzes and um, recipes and, you know, information about almost like public in service information on, in some of them. But it's, it's witty and it's informative in the heat and tales of the sort of everybody's got problems with the slugs and the rabbits and so things like that as, that are also terribly important. And I've seen these donkeys and, and uh, they're quite something. So <laughs> you, thank you so much for chatting to us today and you know t- telling us a bit more about the Northern Fells group and um, we wish you all the very best. Nice to talk to you too. And Manger there uh, just waxing lyrical about the help she's received from the group and singing the praises of Philippa uh, joining us now Philippa Groves is here Philippa is one of the group's village agents she's been hearing there she's been helping to uh, coordinate the group's work Philippa how are you doing I'm fine thank you very much great to have you on the show and, and how lovely was that to, to hear sort of Anne talking about the, the difference you've made to, to her life um, that must be quite special quite something that's wonderful and I, and I didn't pay her anything <laughs> first up we obviously want to hear a bit more about these donkeys oh right um, well they're just my pets basically my husband gave me the first one as my 50th birthday present I said well a, a, a string of pearls might have been nicer but <laughs> so he had to have a friend, and uh, said friend has had lots of problems with flies and midges, and so it's been a bit of an ongoing saga, and everyone's been very helpful, and I've had numerous suggestions of how to keep the flies off them, which has been wonderful. That's magic, Philippa. Wow, what a 50th birthday present, as you say. A donkey. Wow. <laughs> Nothing says romance like a donkey. Um, we've, we've actually put a picture of one of your donkeys up on the BBC Radio Cumbria Twitter page, so check it out if you're on Twitter. It's very, very cute indeed. Um, so a bit more about, um, well, before the pandemic, Philippa, uh, what kind of things was the group doing to, to support the community? Well, we've, we've won a lot of social events. Um, as, as village agents, but obviously a lot of our work is confidential, and that's something we can't talk about because we do help people in in that, um, uh, two other habits of times and things. But um, we run regular oil syndicates and um, septic tank syndicates. We also have a, a wonderful men in sheds workshop, which has been tremendous support to a lot of local men and and a lot of women go in there and help as well. But um, we have a benefits awareness lady who um, can sort out help filling in forms, which are usually numerous pages long, and um, and she knows how to get around you know the, the questions and um, how to fill in forms properly and things like that. So that's tremendous help for people. Um, we have a minibus, which in actual fact the Northern Fells group started off with the minibus, um, <clears throat> and uh, that's because we're royally isolated where we live. Um, and so it made getting into town and things like that possible for um, people who don't have their own transport or who are a wheelchair bound, because uh, we have a minibus with a wheelchair um, access. Uh, we also have the, the Lender Hand Group, which has been going uh, since the outset as well, which runs a medical loan service. And um, they, they, like Anne was saying, they do little things like replacing light bulbs and where well, you don't need to call out a a handyman um, per se, but mm. 
but they'll do little jobs like popping in and walking their dog if someone has to go to the hospital or something and, and just things that support the community all the time. Yeah. Wow, incredible community support you, you provide.